Today, I'm trying out some of the products from Lisa Eldridge's latest launch. For the very first time, she is launching eyeshadow palettes as part of her Holiday 2022 collection. I have two of the five palettes. This is Cinnabar and Myth. We're going to be doing swatches, close-ups, we'll talk about the formulas, we'll do two looks with a Cinnabar palette and one look with Myth. By the way, each palette is $68. I hope you decide whether or not these eyeshadow palettes are worth it to you. She launched her initial collection of True Velvet lipsticks in 2018. And for this collection, holiday 2022, she's coming out with five new shades. I absolutely loved one called Sorcery, but it was already sold out. So I purchased my second favorite shade called Enchanted. It's a bit outside of my comfort zone. So I'm curious to see what you think of that shade. That's the one I'll be trying on today. Wait till you hear how Lisa describes it. One of my favorite parts of trying out a new product is hearing the story behind its birth. And it's gotta be an authentic story. Give this video a thumbs up if you also like the story side of things. But the thing is that we don't always get a story. But in the case of Lisa Eldridge, we do get one. This is a brand led by her. She's an expert in her field. She's a renowned makeup artist. So she definitely has a lot to say. And so for this video, instead of me being the guide per se, I'll insert clips from her launch video and have her be the guide. I'll follow along as she creates the looks and tells us all about her formulas. I thought about cutting this part out, but I do think it's worth pointing out. We have a brand owner here who's not shying away from putting out a 44 minute, no frills product launch video. There are no glitzy, fancy promo clips. There's no gorgeous models, there's no elaborate set design, there is no background music to set the tone and the vibe of the video. It's just her demoing the makeup and telling you about it. And as much as I do respect that, $68 for an eyeshadow palette ain't cheap. And you're gonna want more than one anyway. So are these worth the price to you? Let's get into it. Let's go ahead and get started with the Cinnabar looks. And I'm going to start with the shade Raw Sienna. So this is the lighter shade in the palette, which is a light caramel. I'm gonna use this with fingers, but you can actually use a brush, obviously. This for me is actually quite close to my skin tone. So in terms of who would suit this palette, I'd say it depends what you like, obviously. Preference comes into it. But certainly it would look amazing with blue eyes, green eyes, grey eyes, because it's warm. I mean, I still like it with my brown eyes, so you don't have to follow that at all. Uh so I'm putting raw sienna all over my lid. And this is a seamless matte formula. Let's see what she can tell us about this texture. And this is probably the most ridiculously blendable matte eyeshadow. It practically blends itself, really. <laughs> And it has a low level of luminosity. So if you were to shine a torch on it, you can see that I put in some very, very minute, tiny, tiny pearl within the matte. This just really, really helps to make it so effortless to blend, but it still gives you that matte look and that definition and all of that smokiness and, and defining quality that matte has. And she's right about the shade. It did go on very smooth and it blended extremely well. Next, we're going in with Deep Ochre to start adding definition to the lid. What I'm noticing right away is that this formula is not super pigmented, like let's say an ABH palette. So even though I am dipping straight into this dark brown several times, I don't have to even tap off the excess. I don't have to tap it on the back of my hand to eliminate any excess powder on the brush because I don't see any excess powder on the brush. And this was me tapping it several times on the pan. She calls this formula a velvet formula, so let's hear what this is all about. The next texture is another matte, but I'm calling it a velvet this time. And this one is different from the seamless matte, which feels more like a traditional powder, whereas the velvet feels exactly like a cream. So it's a cream, it's a powder that feels like a cream eyeshadow. As you kind of apply it, you can use fingers or brushes, but you can really feel that it has like, almost behaves in a way like a cream, although it's a powder as well. And let's try to not be distracted by the red blob I have on my eyeball. It's like little veins that burst sometimes when I take anti-inflammatories. So my back was hurting me the other day. I took an anti-inflammatory and the next day I had a red eye. It goes away in a few days. And again, wow, this is it's just incredibly blendable. I'm gonna go in with a deeper shade, which is Fired Earth. This again is a seamless matte, um, which is a really, really dark brown. So I'm just mixing Deep Okra, which is my velvet with fired earth. Those two shades really that I used on the top together 
just to slightly smoke up. So I've just added some mascara and to finish my more natural look, I'm just gonna use my little finger and add a touch of shimmer. This is a top coat, so it's actually completely transparent, Ooh. doesn't have any pigment in the base, and it's just a sprinkling of light gold sparkles. So if I was doing something which was, I wanted a more, less, I guess, full on effect, full glam effect, I might just do that. And I think the level of intensity of this sparkle corresponds to her brand. I've seen on her website that the brand describes itself as chic, playful, and elegant. And this shimmer is what I would call an elegant shimmer for sure. It's very pretty and very natural. That's it. So we're done with our natural look. Now we're going to amp it up. Now I'm actually going to dial this up. So I'm going to go in with bronzite, which is one of the metallics, and just show you how strong some of the metallics can be, particularly if you use fingers for them. If you use a brush, you can get a much lighter finish, more of a sparkly sheen. But if you go in with fingers, then you'll get a really full pigment. And these are really smooth metallics. They are. Again, they don't feel like they need a lot of blending. No, they don't. Fired earth on the other eye. So I'm just building some intensity. Okay, so let's finish up with the metallic and it is super, super smooth. Yeah, it doesn't seem too emphasize the lines on my lids tremendously. I mean, it's a metallic, so it is going to emphasize texture. I think that's just the nature of metallics. So far, this has been effortless and just super easy. Okay, so we got the metallic down and now she's building up more intensity with Fired Earth. Fired Earth is a seamless matte, so that's gonna be nice and easy to blend. Oh my God, I've given myself such sleepless nights over these names. I want them to be so perfect in every palette. There's just so many different looks you can do. I'm trying to, I have a feeling this film's gonna turn into the Lord of the Rings of makeup tutorials. So I may, a little bit faster. One second, let's finish Deep Ochre. And I'm going in several times here on the pan and I'm trying to get more pigment, but I'm trying to build it up. It doesn't really build up very dark. Let's see, let's keep going. Here, so you just gotta go in several times, but it does build up. Okay, so this is the end of this look with the Cinnabar palette. Let's add mascara. Really happy with this look. So the next palette is called Myth. This one is partially inspired by my Myth lip colour, but also I'm particularly fascinated with this idea that a new colour came into the public consciousness. Can you imagine that now? Like suddenly a new colour is invented and we're all wearing it in our clothes and in our makeup. I mean, no, because it probably never ever happened again, but that's exactly what happened in the 1850s when a dye was discovered, a purple dye, and suddenly this went everywhere. It was in clothes, it was in housing, in soft furnishings, and it became known, actually the 18, more, well later on, the 1890s, by which case it was everywhere, as the mauve decade. And I just have always been fascinated by that idea. So I wanted to really research that history and pick up all of those key colours to make what I think is a really inspiring group of colours. All of the mattes in this palette are velvet texture, and you also have a metallic and a top coat. So I'm going to begin... Oh, her swatches look a lot better than mine, but I'm still going to finish mine. This one. Oh, that is gorgeous. What is that one called? Faded Amethyst. That's a metallic. Beautiful. This purpley one, Victorian, Victorian trim. Nice. And Violet Stone. So these are my swatches. I am particularly excited about this color and this sparkle. You can't see it there. I'll do a close up of it. I love how fine the glitter particles are. Okay, let's get started with the look. By using this first velvet shade and this is called Mauve Decade. As this is a velvet, and it's quite creamy. I'm going to use my fingers for this just so you can see how nice and smoothly this goes on. Just as it kind of base coat if you like to look. Next I'm going to go with this shade called... You do have to get in there. This is a color I normally don't go for. I really like this color. I would not have thought just by seeing it in the pan and how 
cool, right? To hear all of this that back in, I don't know what year they discovered a new color. And so they put it everywhere in their clothing and paintings and buildings. That is so cool. So cool to hear this backstory to where the shades came from or to where the shade names in this case, because this is called what Mauve Decade, Mauve Decade, the velvet that I put on right now. Okay, so let's move on to Violet Stone. This is more of a true pure violet. I'm just going to add a little bit. Again, this is a velvet, so it's really creamy. That's kind of it for blending. So now I'm just taking Mauve Decade. You don't have to blend much at all. Look at that. That was easy. Underneath Rewind. Wine. Again, this is a velvet, so it's really creamy. Yes. And that's kind of it for blending. So now I'm just taking Mauve Decade underneath my lower lash line just a little bit. hardly see it. And I'm going to go in with this shade which is called Fake. Perfect formula for, for beginners. I very often do my makeup last minute and it's often for very just to like going out to um to run errands and I like just reaching for something and kind of haphazardly put it on my eyes. The eyeshadows I'm talking about. This seems to be the perfect formula for that because you can't mess it up. All right there's Mauve Decade. Did Amethyst and this yes. is more of a metallic. You can apply this with fingers and it goes much more metallic and more intense. But I'm going to keep it fairly natural. And this to me has, has been one of my surprise palettes because when I was putting them all together and I do love them all, I was thinking, oh, which is going to be my favourite? You know, this one, this one, this one, this one. But actually, this one has kind of ended up being my favourite. I'm also going to use that one underneath. So a little bit of faded amethyst. And this is a really beautiful, almost taupey. It is beautiful. Smoky, taupey, amethysty shades. It's quite a muted Purple, very muted which i really love these colors look incredible if you do it's almost like a gray eyes, i think everyone can wear them but if you have green or hazel eyes or any of that kind of warmth in your eyes because it's, it's such, such a really good um contrast, contrast. okay, okay. I'm gonna go with the deeper shade pause to use a brush that picks up shimmers better even though oh yeah this is a zero two so let me switch to the 28 which has a mix of natural and synthetic fibers so we should do a better job at picking up where are you where are you here it is a better job at picking up this metallic shade i can't get over how pretty pretty how pretty it is this is very own brand right classy sophisticated colors this is not a loud purple so i did put the metallic here with a brush just as she did and it does go on very soft unlike the bronzite from cinnabar that we put it on with with fingers and it was pretty intense why don't we now put this one on with fingers see what the difference is yes you do get more pigment more intensity but still it's not it's not the impact that we got from bronzite you remember it's this guy but i like that this metallic is it's subdued again it's elegant and it's not bringing out the texture on my lids all right what's the next this is called nocturama it looks black in the palette but it's actually just a really really blackened violet so it's very very dark and this is great if you want more of a smoky effect with this palette so just introducing more of that sort of smokiness it definitely does give me depth it is darkening the outer lash i mean the the upper lash line in the softest way possible and you can probably see that nothing's dropping down either so i'm i did do my base before but i only did that confident in the in that knowledge that i wasn't going to end up covered in eyeshadow so I'm big deal the no fallout thing and we'll talk about why i think it's such a huge deal at the end of the video it's not just that it's that it can be annoying or that it can ruin your your makeup once you do your base first and then you end up with black particles of eyeshadow on your cheeks there's there's something else we'll get into that okay so i added noc noc nocturama nocturama I'm telling you i feel like i was the one who discovered a new color here i've never worn these tones before just a touch under the lash line nocturama Oh, now it actually did apply. Did you see that? Look at that. I see pigment. I see a lot of pigment. That, that's cool. Okay, looks like I got two or three fallout particles. This is the last time that I put that black Nocturama on the lower lash line. But it's almost like you have to challenge it to actually produce fallout. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, next. Using Nocturama just through the roots of my lashes. And I'll smoke this out a tiny bit more once I've got my um, mascara on as well. Just to show you how that looks. I'm going to finish off with the top coat which is illusionism yes. and this one is it's almost as i say it's a transparent base so it doesn't have if you can see 
any pigment in it, but it's got like an ultraviolet, lavender ultraviolet effect. So it goes from hot pink to kind of violety. And with this one, I so either nice. like to use it just at the inner corner. It's really just the oh, pearl. Great. There's no pigment in there at all. It's more like just giving you that little sprinkle. And this would be nice if you were wanting to kind of bring more of that, um, more of an evening feel really. The other place I quite like to put it is just sort of around this area here, going into the inner socket line. I don't know if you can see that, if it's picking up on the camera. As I say, it's pretty subtle, but I really love these colours. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of um, mascara. What I like about the sparkle is that it adds a pop of colour because some of the sparkles in here are pink, but done in such a beautiful way that it really adds a fun touch to this look. The colours were already beautiful, but this is just like the icing on the cake. Now, and then quickly show you that. I know this video is becoming so long. So I put some black mascara on and you could also add a little bit of pencil would look amazing. Black Ooh, blue. black pencil. Let's do black pencil. I have the perfect black liner in mind. It's a black liner from Nabla and it is intense. You can smudge it. Thinking of lining the rim. Now it's time to try on the lipstick and I forgot to tell you I also got the matching lip liner. My lips are um, a lot bigger. I just got them done last week. I think I overdid it a little bit. The next new velvet is Velvet Enchantment. And this is like a beguiling, soft red madder rose. This is the most muted red in my collection. It's almost like if you took, for example, my shade Palazzo, which is one of my lucent reds, applied that and then blotted and blotted and blotted and blotted it and put some translucent powder all over it, this is the kind of red you'd end up with. Yeah. Enlivening colour. And that is how it looks because this gives you everything that red brings to your face might not but great in a much the, more muted soft way color. it's a bit like i feel like it's a little fairy tale red let's sum things up here we're trying to figure out whether spending 68 dollars on an eyeshadow palette is worth it to you if you like the fact that this is customizable actually this is refillable and customizable it does have the little dots in the back of the pan so that you can pop them out and have a rat tail comb oh yeah okay so i'm barely pushing and there it is it's already coming out what she was saying is that as a makeup artist there are shades that you run out of that you use a lot and so it's it's nice to be able to refill those particular shades that is not the case for me for me that is not really a a benefit that i care about because i never hit pan on eyeshadows one of our palettes it's called a sorcery palette and i really wanted that one but it's sold out and the reason why i wanted that one is because i don't have all of her six formulas in these two palettes i believe there are two formulas still missing one that gives you that wet look, wet glossy look. And the other one, I believe it was another type of metallic and it had the most gorgeous greens. There's a shade called Magical. Stunning, 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 sold out. Point number two, extraordinarily blendable, yes. Now that is a selling point for me because like I said, I do my makeup in a hurry. I don't wanna mess with extremely pigmented eyeshadows or extremely powdery eyeshadows. So this is fantastic for me when I just want to quickly get it done. Let's see here what else compact. Yes, it's very compact, easily fits in your purse. Compared to other palettes, I mean, this is extremely portable. Four points to consider here. The elegant color story. I had no idea that Lisa Eldridge is the global, what was it? I put in my notes, the global creative, the global creative director for Lancome. So obviously she is, aside from being celebrity makeup artist and she has a million accolades, she knows how to put a color story together, one that feels elegant, chic, sophisticated, even with sparkles. You don't have to go without your sparkles. You don't have to go without your metallics. They are, as she said, kind to the lids. Point number five, no fallout. Okay, so we talked about that one, but this is extra appealing for those of us who like to wear Lashify or Falscara, you know, those lash segments, or lash extensions. Why? Because these shadows are not going to get on your lashes because there is no fallout. Therefore, your lash segments, especially Lashify, those are pricey lash segments that I like to take care of so that I'm able to reuse them. So when I do wear them, I really try to stay away from powdery shadows because the lashes will catch all of that powder that is coming out. Great eyeshadows to keep your segments nice and clean.
Point number six, day to night palettes. With both of these, Cinnabar and Myth, you can create day to night looks. Just pop these in your purse. Super convenient to have them along. If it helps you at all, I'll tell you what I think. If I didn't have a YouTube channel dedicated to reviewing makeup and trying and testing makeup, would I get these palettes? I would. And I would start with Cinnabar. I can see being my go-to everyday neutral workhorse of a shadow palette. I highly recommend it. The lipstick formula feels very comfortable, very nice. I want to say it feels like the Charlotte Tilbury uh, formula. So there you have it. What do you think of her collection? What do you think? I would love to know whether you decided to pick up some of uh, some of these eyeshadows for us makeup lovers. Just the fact that it's her very first eyeshadow palette launch. I wanted to have at least one of them. And that's it, you guys. I had so much fun recording this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.